John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4, 18 and 19, 25 through 27, where Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus says as he sits at the table again with his disciples on the night before his death, sharing what we call the Last Supper. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Maybe it goes without saying, but in the next 48 to 72 hours or so, these disciples will have plenty of occasions to be anxious and afraid and completely disoriented. As Jesus is arrested, beaten, and crucified, as the world as they know it falls apart, they will be troubled. They will be very troubled. Still, knowing that, Jesus urges them to be calm, to be at peace even. Don't let your hearts be troubled. I wish I was there to hear his tone, to watch his face and his body language? Does he try to de-escalate, assess the situation and the level of anxiety? Does he intentionally relax his body, encourage everyone to breathe? Breathe. Does he drop his voice to a calm state and tell everyone, don't panic, everything will be okay. Let's keep moving in this direction. And how do the disciples hear this? I mean, can they even hear this? Is it like when we tell someone we're worried about something and they respond, don't worry? Like when I was stuck in the eye of Hurricane Andrew in Miami in 1992, category five, and my mom said, Amy, don't worry. Yeah, right. Or when the doctor sat us down and said, it looks like your daughter might have a rare form of cancer, but don't worry. Yeah, right. Or when, when what? When we're failing a class or fighting with a good friend, losing a job or caring for someone with dementia? When what? We all face moments where fear and uncertainty creep in when trouble and trauma are real possibilities. Still knowing that Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Out of the context of those real possibilities, those words are wonderful, beautiful, perfect for a card or a Facebook post or a counted cross stitch. But they are also challenging and powerful precisely because we live in a world that can sometimes knock the holy stuffing out of us, just as it did to Jesus' first disciples. So we need moments where we are reminded, where we are encouraged to breathe, breathe, to listen to Jesus' calming voice, to relax into his reliable presence, Pentecost feels like a good time. Pentecost in Greek means 50th, and it's a celebration that we observe 50 days after Easter, but had historically been known as the Feast of Weeks. It was originally a Jewish celebration of the wheat harvest, 
but it has been reimagined by the Christian church as the birth of the church, a new or different kind of harvest. When by the power of the Holy Spirit, people came to believe in Jesus as the Messiah. When we think of Pentecost, we might often think of the dramatic events described in Acts 2. The tongues of fire, the rushing wind, people from every part of the known world hearing the gospel in their native languages, from people who didn't typically speak those languages. It's so dramatic, so different from an average Tuesday afternoon or even the best Sunday morning. And because of that, maybe we miss the everyday nature of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promises in John 14. The Father will send the advocate, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit to remind you of everything I taught you and to teach you how to live here when I return to heaven. The advocate, sometimes translated as counselor or helper. The Greek word is paraclete, not to be confused with parakeet. And it literally means the one who is called to come alongside someone else. In Greek culture, a paraclete was like a family attorney. And in John 14, Jesus uses this term, I think, to elicit that imagery and to assure the disciples that they will never be alone. They will not, he says, be orphaned. They will have the Holy Spirit to guide them. What Jesus is really saying here is that when life gets tough, when the bottom falls out, when things don't go the way we had hoped, God will never leave us or forsake us, ever. Just as Jesus promised in John 14, the Holy Spirit has been gifted to us. We see that promise fulfilled at Pentecost in Acts 2, and perhaps we have seen it fulfilled since, when we too have sensed the presence of God's Spirit in us and around us, leading the way, lifting us up, doing the things Jesus says he will do. Sometimes in dramatic ways, sometimes in quieter, subtler ways. When I was serving a church in Philadelphia, I had a memorable conversation with a dear woman named Gladys. At about 80 years old, she came to the altar rail for prayer one Pentecost Sunday. Crying, she said to me, Amy, I think there's something wrong with me. I've never had one of those Holy Spirit moments with the wind and the tongues. In other words, no grand event. That's the expectation some people have or have been taught to have. But as Gladys and I talked, she remembered many times, many times, when she felt the closeness of God's spirit, when she knew God was with her, guiding her, giving her strength, stirring her joy. The spirit comes to us, Jesus says, sometimes during a mass event and sometimes on a regular Tuesday afternoon. Sometimes when we feel a holy fire and sometimes when we're sipping chamomile tea. Each one is a Pentecost moment in which Jesus reassures us, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe God. Believe me too. The Spirit will be with you to guide you. You will not be alone. And that, I do believe, is where the disciples will find their peace, a peace that passes all understanding, as the Apostle Paul says, not in the absence of difficulty or conflict, but in the presence of God, right? The problems of this world do not magically go away, but in the light of God's presence, the disciples gain a new strength, and prayerfully, so will we. So when Jesus ascends and the disciples need a reminder of what he taught and stood for, God's spirit is present. When they venture out of their comfort zones and into unknown territory to share the gospel, God's spirit is present. When they question themselves and second guess their abilities like we do sometimes, God's spirit is present. And when we 
when we hear bad news from the doctor, or when someone we love leaves, God's spirit is present. When our kids struggle with a disease or addiction, when they can't find their footing, God's spirit is present. When it feels like everything is going right and when it feels like nothing's going right, God's spirit is present. When the way forward seems crystal clear and when we don't know how to face what lies ahead, God's spirit is present and kind and faithful just as Jesus promises. Whether subtle or spectacular, all of these are Pentecost moments in which Jesus encourages us to take a holy breath and assures us saying, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe God, believe me too. The spirit is with you to guide you, to remind you, to strengthen you. You are not alone, never on your own, never orphaned. And that, I do believe, is where we will find our greatest peace, a peace that passes all understanding, not in the absence of difficulty or conflict, but in the faithful presence of God and in the assurance of Christ who says so beautifully and powerfully in John 1633. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Let's pray. God, we believe you and we believe Jesus when he promises the faithful presence of your spirit in the triumph and in the trouble. Hear us now as we bring that trouble to you. Trouble in our hearts, in our homes and schools, in our neighborhood and our country, in the world. Hear us as we lift even the names and situations we're thinking of in silence right now. Hear us as we claim and thank you for your presence in all of those places. Give us eyes to see you at work. Give us strength to face what comes our way. Make this Pentecost day, whether in subtle or spectacular ways, a holy celebration, a heavenly reminder that you are with us, just as Jesus promised. In his name we pray. Amen.